have 29 youth exchange students from around the world, and during this weekend, we will have 23 of the 29 participating either in all of the activities during the weekend or some of the activities. Georgiana, so that's, do any of them know how to drywall? <laughs> Drywalling is not on our schedule tomorrow. Are you kids glad or what? Just a thought. They're busy. Um, but more interestingly, maybe for next year, is the fact that our club, and I know you've heard this before, but I have to say it again, our club uh, participated in <clears throat> sending the most students outbound of any club in the district and perhaps more than we've ever done before. We have six American students going outbound next year for year 2000-2001 and I would like you to um, write on your calendar not to miss July 21st when Brian Miller this year's Youth Exchange co-chair and next year's Youth Exchange for our club singular chairperson will introduce the six outbound Americans uh, going overseas and it'll be a great program that you won't want to miss. In addition to the 29 students that are in the district this year, as you all know, we host as a club three of those students. That is more than any other club in the district and again next year we will host three inbound students, again, more than any other club in the district. And next year, we are having our three students in three different school districts, one in New Hartford, one in Whitesboro, and one in Clinton. So please, if you haven't been involved in Youth Exchange, get involved. It's a lot of fun. We need your help. And you uh, do get to know a lot of young people from around the world. The objectives for Youth Exchange, I'm also pleased to say, have all been reached by our club and by the district. The objectives of Youth Exchange are to promote international goodwill and understanding, pretty clear, to enable students to advance their education, and I've heard that they've gotten some kind of an education this year, to give students the opportunities to broaden their outlook by learning about different cultures, creeds, and colors, and to have these students act as ambassadors for their own countries, their countries here in the United States and our country abroad. We also have an objective to provide sufficient time to study and also to observe another country's culture. And that's what we're doing this weekend. We're observing another country's culture, the Utica country's culture. So this, this weekend, we have quite a lot of activities, and if you bear with me, I have to give thanks to those people and other clubs that are participating just in this one weekend. Today, we have them on a tour. They started at 8.30 this morning, and George Trudeau headed up today and, in addition, gave up a day at work, and he's riding the bus with the students all day. With him, he has Dominic Pasolacqua and Jack Rosen. Tonight, New Hartford Rotary is hosting a karaoke and um, pizza party. And I thank, thanked and will thank formally Craig Pugh and Jeff Gornick of the New Hartford Rotary Club. Tomorrow, we again have the motor coach coming. They'll meet in Utica College parking lot. And Mitzi Rule has coordinated the Saturday activities, which will include a trip to Enchanted Forest. And our club <clears throat> is sponsoring it and picking up the tab for all of the admission tickets for all the students. I know Mitzi will have a wonderful time, as they will. And again, her helpers for tomorrow, giving up all day on Saturday which is why nobody is sheetrocking, I yeah, think. I can tell. Driving. Dominic Pasolacqua <coughs> and Shaki Gary are both spending the day tomorrow uh, in Old Forge. On Saturday night, interestingly, Utica Sunrise, Sadie Ann Zagby Spear and Ed Jekyll agreed to host a dinner event tomorrow and are planning a, a, a spaghetti supper and I've been told that they have a band coming because one of their sons uh, plays in the band. So tomorrow night until midnight, so they don't wind up on my deck 
in New Hartford. They will be hosted by the Utica Sunrise Club. And on Sunday, thanks to Ray Allen, who talked it up at the Oriskany Whitestown meeting, the Oriskany Whitestown Club will be hosting a cookout at Oriskany Battlefield on Sunday. And then from Oriskany Battlefield, the students will all go home. That's just part of the people that have helped out on this weekend. I also would like to thank and like you to know that hosting students this weekend, actually hosting four students at one time, Brimer and Wendy Humphreys, Shockey, thank you, Brimer. Shockey L. Gary has two young uh, students with him. John and Barbara Kogut have two. Brian and Nancy Miller have two. And at my house and the neighbor next door, we have six. We have the girls in the So with that, I'd like to ask all the students, and uh, Brian and uh, George are gonna direct you up here to my left to form a line. Each one of the students will be telling you their name, where they live, and if you could tell them where you live by city, country, and maybe a region, and also which club is hosting you. The last three students will give you an overview of what they think a memorable experience has been during the year. And the very last student, David DeMarco, is going last because I understand David coordinated who the three should be, so we need him to say the closing words. So with that, Anne, Anne, I'll ask Anne, who is one of mine, to be the uh, first one. Hi, everybody. My name is Anne Manson, and I'm from Denmark. Um, I live in Denmark, about 45 minutes from the German border, and two and a half hours west of Copenhagen. In a city which has 55,000 55, people living there. Um, here, my host club is Casanova, and I like it there. It's small, but I like it. Okay, nice. you can stay on the stage, okay? We need to turn the volume up, so how's that managed? And I would like you to hold your applause because at the end we're going to have a question and answer time allowing that you can ask the students any questions. Guten Tag. My name is Florian. I'm from south of Germany, a city called Konstanz. Um, Konstanz has 80,000 inhabitants. It's also one minute away from Switzerland and is famous for the Renaissance Center. Um, my host club is Little Fort. I'm Antonio Biroli. I come from Italy. I live in Bergamo. It's a small town near Milan. And here I'm staying in Rome, New York. Hi, I'm Marge Valet. I'm from Holland. I live uh, in a small town called Helford. It's an hour and a half from Amsterdam and half an hour from the Belgian border. Um, here I'm staying in Auburn, New York, and I have a great day. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> My name is Mitsuru Fushin, I'm from Japan. I'm staying in Sakurai, and I'm really happy to come here. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I'm from Poland and e, the town is Austin and I'm sponsored by this club, Eureka. Hi Larry! Hey. <laughs> oh, I just want to thank this club for um, giving us an opportunity to meet all together because it's so much fun when we can talk and see each other and it's our last um, weekend so thanks a lot Eureka. <laughs> Good afternoon, I'm Laura Nardelli, I'm from the south of Argentina and I'm living in Cato now. Wow. Hi, I'm Carlota de Aga. I'm from Barcelona, Spain, and I'm in the Rot in Oneida Rotary Club. Thanks. My name is Carlos Suess. I'm from Germany. I live in Bremen, which is in the north of Germany, and here I'm staying in Poland. Thanks. Hi, my 
my name is Laura Chardelle-Lardier. I live in the south of Paris, in France, and here I'm staying in Hamilton. Hi, I'm Gabriela Varadi. I'm from Hungary, Chateau um, next to the Slovakian border. And uh, my host club is Oswego Rotary. Hi, my name is Julie. I'm from Belgium. I live in Liège, which is kind of the biggest city in Belgium. And here I'm staying in Marsalis, and I'm hosted by the Marsalis Rotary Club. Hi, I'm Jaime from Mexico. Um, I live in central Mexico, the only big town. Um, my host club is on the top of the hills. I'm Eugenia Dyer. I'm from Colina, Brazil, and my host club is The Rich Club. Hello, my name is Sarah Woodham, and I'm from Australia. Here I'm staying in Poland, and I'm hosted by the Rotary Club Carter Valley. <laughs> Hi, my name is Ruben Luna. I'm from Venezuela. Uh, I live like five hours from the capital, Caracas. Uh, my house, Rotary Club, is Eastwood, and my city in Venezuela is Barquisimeto. Hello, I'm Rafael, I'm from Brazil. I'm in the city of Rio Claro, in the state of Sao Paulo, in Brazil, South East Park. Well, and I'm staying here in Bird, in north of Syracuse, on Isla Shores Club. Well, last year when I got here, I got here in the end of August. And it was like sunny, warm days, and everyone every day was like, oh my god, the weather today is like so nice, the blue, the sky is blue, the sun is shining. I was like, yeah, so <laughs> normal, like no big deal. And then it started like getting cold, and cold, and cold, and then it started snowing. But for me, the beginning was like so fun, because we don't have snow in Brazil. So I was like so happy about it, I was like, I could go snowboarding, sliding, some people took me to like, go snowboarding. That was so much fun. But then after like two weeks, it was like, yeah. <laughs> snow, 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 like every day is snow. I couldn't go anywhere, it's cold. And then and now I understood why everyone was like saying every day, oh, the sky is blue, it's so cold. <laughs> it only rains here, like last month was 24 days of rain in 30. <laughs> oh, now I'm looking for the summer now. They said it's now. I didn't see it. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, everybody. My name is Sala Eva. I come from Halitko, Finland, and I'm hosted here by. Syracuse Rotary Club. I live in Dewitt, near Syracuse. And when I first came here, it was I was standing in the airport and nobody came to pick me up. I was really worried. <laughs> Anyways, the weather was nice, it was warm, and when it came winter, but there wasn't any snow in winter. There was no snow. I went to go snowboarding. And there was only little snow. It was so weak. But this is where I found um, first it was really hard to find some friends in here, but when I go to swimming team, it was, I found some friends in there. And it's, all I can say now is, I still think Americans are weird. <laughs> as I go home, I think everybody's normal. <laughs> just a nice, this whole year has been a great experience, meeting people all around the world, and I will do it again if I could. Thanks. <laughs> and I'm hosted by Liverpool Rotary Club. Um, I have so many wonderful experiences, but I guess like the most awesome experience is know all you guys. And um, I don't know, I think that um, I have like friends all over the world, and this kind of really nice. And I'm not going on the trip, so I just wanna wish all of you like a nice trip, and I'm gonna meet you a lot. <laughs> and I will never forget you guys. Yeah! Hello, I'm David Marco. I'm from South Africa. No, <laughs> I'm from Belgium. I'm sponsored by New Hartford Rotary Club. I came here in August and I'm having a great time. I left everything in Belgium: my friend, my family, the parties, 
the beer. <laughs> and I came here for pizza party, TV party, church party, like tonight. <laughs> so I'm having a very good time. <laughs> my friend will ask me, what did you do in America? You know, party in a church. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to thank the Rotary, the Utica Rotary Club for this weekend. It will be very great. Thank you very much. Now, questions from anyone to any of the students, please. We've got plenty of time. We took more time about the Gibbs uh, Bowling Award. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Tennis. Do we still bowl? <laughs> yes. Oh, we bowl. I'm sorry. It's a different size ball, Georgiana. <laughs> sorry. Yes, Rick. <laughs> So it's much easier. 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 Why don't you? Yeah. That's good. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> American school is very easy. So it's great. I'm here. I'm, I don't study. I have 90, 90 average. Like yeah, never do my Everybody. Nobody studied that. They have a good grade. That's a paradise. <laughs> Uh, I, I think that most of the country we don't have any sport at school, so it's a great thing here. You don't go to school just for study. You go to school for sport, you have uh, the musical, a play, and you can have a great time at school. So it's be for me it's better. Get the hand mic. Okay, more hand questions? Yes, Chuck. David just said he can't tell you what his answer would be. Anyone, anyone who can tell the group what their answer would be? No. Okay, step up. Who was it? I don't know. It was me? Yes, you. My trip to California. That's what about it? it? I went 10 days to California about three months ago and I had a really great time and I loved it over there. Why? I don't know. I <laughs> met much more people over there in 10 days than I did here in one year, so. Wow. So that's it. In what school district are you in? Uh, Marcellus. Marcellus. Okay, another question? Me, my best room there in just a year. All the year is great. So. Every day is not great, but there's lots of great days, and it's like for a whole experience, you will always remember. Every day you, you can meet more people, you can see more things in another country, other culture, other, other costume. That's the best for me. And learn English every day. <laughs> We're learning English every day. <laughs> yes, Tim? Uh, since mo many of you have been here since August, some of you I know have come in, in mid-year. Uh, you've experienced something that obviously many of us have not experienced, but give us some directions of things that you feel that we should do different as host clubs or a host club uh, that would improve things. Well, I think oh not God. you, Ed. It's this <laughs> you're with us. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly my point. I think we should get more money. <laughs> <laughs> How many students think that you should get more money? Come on, you just raise your hands. <laughs> and for those in the room that don't know, that clubs pay between, I think 50 is the low, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and 70 is the high, and that's Agnes. Okay, so it does run between 50 and $70 a month that each of the host clubs um, give to the students for a stipend. That's for spending money? That's for whatever they need it for. Spending food, money, food, food uh, at, at school. Of course, their host families also treat them as one of the families by one of the family by providing food or room and board. What else should we do? I think the Rotary should give some money for the exchange student for the prom. 
You know the problem? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, when is yours? It's always Tuxedo, flowers, 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 Argo me when is yours? When is yours? All right, it's always about money, David. You know, it's always about money. How about something that's not about money? What could we do differently? There's too much rules. You should like, you're too tied up about it. We're too tied up. Does that mean up tight? Yeah, I understand all the insurance things, but you know, we're just young people. We need to like have parties. <laughs> All right, well, that falls under the rules category, right? Uh, I want to tell you something. We did a party uh, in uh, one of these people's house, and the parents say yes. Our parents say yes, so we went to the party. Her parents uh, find a way to a free ticket for a hockey game. So we had a lot of fun. We went to a hockey game. We bring everybody brought, brought food, drink, like soda, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was a lot of fun. I, I still have a hockey stick from the gate, and that was awesome. And I know that the Rotary District didn't like it just because we we get together just exchange something. So for me, it's a little bit too straight. It's just like every, everything was fine. All the family said yes, there's no trouble, no like alcohol, no smoking drugs, there's nothing. And, Definitely and not. we have free ticket for a hockey game, <coughs> who's awesome. Hockey is pretty big. And for those of us in the audience that know what's trying to happen on the district level, there are sanctioned events, this is one of them, where they all come together. But the rest of the year, we want each one of the students to acclimate themselves to American life with American students to be more involved with the American high school students. So that probably was the reason why the district didn't look upon that too favorably. It was the Must have been. Larry. All of you come from different uh, countries with different political environments. And I'm wondering if any of you have any comments about the American political environment versus the political environment in your it's own uh, in your own country. <laughs> How about from the end of the room, Anne? You don't have enough different parties. You only two different yeah. kind of parties and they both have kind of the same ideas, right? We have involved with like twenty different parties, right? We don't have enough parties. No, I just, just what she said. Political parties. Political parties. Florian, what do you think? Yeah, I think so too. Like in Germany, we have like six, seven big ones. Here, you only have like two big ones. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> okay. How about another question? It's one fifteen, and if not, uh, me, I think that America. I love it. You know, you you call you call in your own city. It's free. You call here in your market, Utica. It's free. In our country, no, it's not free. Internet here, you pay 20 bucks a month. In our country, it's not 20 bucks a month. It's pretty expensive. For all, all of that, I think America is great. But America is crazy too when they say that the age for drink, for example. In my country, we don't have an, any age for drink. So when you're seven years old, you can go drink. You can drink in the restaurant wine with your father. There's no problem. You won't, won't make trouble. But 18 was fine, but 21, 18, you can vote, you can fight and kill people in the army. You're an adult and you can drink. For me, it's very the crazy worst in America. But all the rest is fine. But. Now I know why he's the spokesperson for the group. <laughs> FX, yeah. FX. Uh, did the various schools that you're in make any attempt to introduce you to these students, or how did you get to meet people? Having had Rotary Exchange students, Laura. So, <coughs> Laura's the new. I'm the new, and I started in the middle of the year in January. And I just entered the classes, and when someone said like, "Hi, where are you from?" I said like Argentina, and they said, "Cool," and that's the end of the conversation. So I start talking with them. I just don't care <laughs> because it's the only way we can do friends. I mean, if we don't start, it's usually difficult for them to start with us because they don't know much about us. We don't know much about us, our country, so they don't know what to ask. So we start asking about them. 
what what school did what school did you are you what school? Yeah. School. It's a small school. Yeah. Anyone else have any comments on how easy it is to make friends? My school introduced me six months after I came here. Louder, my sweet now. My school introduced me six months after I came. Six, six, point. six months point. after point. she came here, the school introduced her. Six What's school? What school? Oneida. Nobody even knows I'm exchange student because they didn't introduce me at all. So I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, here because they have so many exchange students every year, so you're like almost just one more in the list of yeah. the school. Yeah, they don't. Care. Like the 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 best way I could make friends here was by the sports. I was in the soccer team, so I knew the people who play soccer, and then they introduced me. But like the school didn't do anything actually. Uh, I hear a recommendation for next year, don't I? Yeah. Okay, Larry. I wonder in that same with regard to that same question. Can any of you give us some suggestions what we as the Rotary Clubs can do to help you I have a become good suggestion for you. See, you play soccer on the team. I love soccer, it's my favorite sport. I played for eight years in Belgium. I came here, I tried the team and I was pretty good and they said you can't play anymore. You're not you eighteen and you already graduated, so you can't play any sport at school. So I came here and the best thing for me at school is sport. I can play with my friend and meet people in the sport team. And I couldn't yeah. play. For me, it's a good thing. So it's Tell students to go in the sports team, so they like they meet a lot of people. Yeah. But I think like the faculty in school, like the principal, they should like help to the kids to meet new people. I mean, in my school, my principal was in Rotary, but he didn't tell anyone that I was coming. And still today, I've been here since January. And when I first came, nobody helped me. No one introduced me to anybody. And still, people still don't know who I am and nobody makes an effort and it is difficult but you've just got to try and work with what you've got and my principal is in Rotary and and still I, I'd find teachers and they'd say who are you and I'd say I'm the exchange student and nobody knows yeah. well Even I guess we school. could all do a little bit better and maybe Utica Rotary Club uh, next year as most of you know again in the audience there are three of us on the district committee for youth exchange Actually, four Grimers, yeah. and also so Jackie Michael, um, Brian Miller, uh, Brimer Humphreys, and myself all on the district level. So maybe we can create some kind of movement so that the club introduces you to the school, and the school introduces you to the other students. I guess that the counselors in a, in their own clubs have to uh, take the the boy or the girl when they come to the school, to the guidance office, and then say like, she needs guidance or he needs guidance, because when I came here, like, the guidance thought I was me. my school was like, here, and so they, she said like, that's your locker, and I didn't know how to open the locker. <laughs> <laughs> so I said like, okay, and then a boy came, and because I met him before, he's a son of a Rotarian, so he said, like, well, do you want me to show the school? So he introduced the teachers, not the guidance. Because she said, like, only that. And as I came, I went alone the first day. Nobody knew that I was the two students. So it was kind of weird. Okay, Florian? Hey, we start off with form, yeah. And I, got, I had to come down and talk in front of everybody. They announced me, like, first day. So my school did a really good job. And I did sports, like, I played soccer. So I came, like, four weeks before school started. I think soccer practice starts like two weeks before and I played soccer so I know like most of the people. Like if you do sports it helps pretty good. Yeah, you know that like, because sports is like the biggest thing, like the cool people who sports like it's really, like a jungle player, you know what I mean? Yeah, because the problem is that some of us can't do it. Yeah, I was in the tennis team at the beginning of the year and then the rotary told me, No, you've graduated, you can't play and I was like, Okay, so I'm gonna have to it has to do with the age and how many years they play. I asked the school to stay just at the practice and they told me no, there's no just point for you to stay at practice. Yeah, but I asked just to practice with them, not playing games, and they said no, because there's no point. So I, I hear also that on a counselor level, and again for us uh, Utica Rotarians, last year we had three very active, or in the current year right now, we have three very active club counselors. Obviously, in addition to all that Brian Miller does with the schools, but um, Agnes's counselor was is Larry Golden and Michi, who is not here today, our Japanese student who will be with you tonight. 
John Kogut, and uh, Ali from Australia, who is not here today but will be missing all weekend because he's in New York. Um, his counselor is Neil Bornstein. So we take it very seriously in this club that the counselor get involved with the student so that the students transition in uh, school and with the families that they live with um, can be much more successful. So we try and I think we all can try a little harder. Does any of the students have any other last minute things they'd like to say? I'm sorry. Um, do, you, do you find that um, the alcohol rules being uh, lenient in your country, do uh, students abuse no. alcohol that, or drink yeah. That's because there's no limits, they don't yeah. abuse, they don't, they don't even want they, to like, show up. I think it's yeah. crazy here. When I told my story about alcohol here, they're like, oh, do that, you do that. See, for my senior year, uh, we went to see a brewery and we drink with a t-shirt. The party that's like the prom, we don't have prom, but we have party that the school organized and new teachers serve you beer. It's not a big deal. I was seven, five, my father gave me wine at the table in the restaurant. The difference here, they can't do it, so it's illegal, so if it's illegal, I do it. They drink to get drunk it's fun. here. Yeah. It's illegal, when there's it's like no legal wage, you drink to socialize, like the audience do, like go, yeah. Yeah, just, just drink one beer instead of soda. Here they drink to get drunk. Yeah, it's a yeah. Well, I can, I can guarantee the students one thing for the rest of the weekend. We're, we, we're not going to change the laws. <laughs> All the rules still apply. I'm sorry. It's a non-smoking, non-drinking weekend, and who knows what will happen uh, in the future. But I would like to, yes, Dr. Ryan. I just had one uh, question as a follow-up to the discussion that we had on schools, and that is, I'd like to know if uh, any of the school systems that you're involved with provide any kind of school lunches for you. Question number one, and question two. Do they, do they provide the uh, ability to graduate from the U.S. school system? All right, how many, raise your hand, do the school districts pay for your lunches so you don't have to pay for them? All right, how many you. is that? You mean in, in the United States? Or? In the United States here, your school lunches oh are being paid for. So it's New Hartford. Not, not from your allowance, like, not I, from I, your stipend. I, I get $50. Um, and then I think that the other $20 a month is to okay. pay for them. So it, there's a few of them. And then what was the other part of the question? I'm wondering if they, uh, if they afford you the opportunity from, to graduate from the U.S. system. Yeah. Okay. It, I get to, but it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. How many? How many of you? I don't know. I get paid from Rory, so. No, no, how many are going to graduate? How many are going to graduate? How many are going to graduate from the American school system and have that apply and not have to repeat when you go back to your countries? Well, okay. no, I might not have to repeat, but I'm not going to graduate. Okay, some of these students will go back. Laura from France. Laura, step up. Laura? Laura's my student. Uh, I'm France on a district level, and she's only she came over when she was 16. So when she goes back, she has to complete two more years. Laura, you're hiding. Get up. <laughs> you have to repeat two more years, yeah, right? Two more years. Two more years back in her country, and um, Agnes this year through the arm twisting of Brian and Larry Golden, and I don't know how many others with the New Hartford School System will officially graduate from New Hartford School and her diploma will be valid in Poland so she can go to university starting next year. And that's great news, huh, Ag? Yeah. <laughs> to um, all of us in the room in closing, let, let's always remember these young people from around the world that we have here today because they are the hope of yesterday. They are the joy of today, and you all are the guarantee for a better tomorrow. Thank you all. Thank you. I just want to like say one thing, like a thing in the name of all exchange students, to thank the Rotary for giving us this opportunity to come this year and learn so many things in this year. It does really help for us. It makes it like grow up a lot. One, one little final comment, folks, and for the students. Um, 
more or less, and, and please accept this in the way it said in defense of Rotary, um, Rotary is made up of volunteers. Every person in the room is a volunteer, and nobody gets paid. And what happens in our organization is, for example, I'm president of the Utica Rotary Club, and next year, Larry Golden becomes president. And then after that, Lou Gelati, and after that, Georgiana, and so on. And we change a lot. So what happens often in youth exchange is that someone might have been very well organized in Cato Meridian High School. And that person steps down, and a new person comes in, and they don't get the benefit of the knowledge of that older person. So I think your comments are excellent, and they're right on. And with three members of the group who will be on the district committee can make some recommendations. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit to say about the district over the next couple of years as a district governor nominee. And I think that we can make some changes, and we think your comments today were just great. Have a super weekend, folks. Enjoy it here. Enjoy your trip. Welcome again to the Utica area. And if there's anything we can do, go to Georgiana's house. She'll take care of you. Okay? Thank you, folks. Take care.